Hey guys, good morning. It's Tony. Before I start the video, I do want to say please like, subscribe, and comment. If you want to learn also how I trade, my strategy, <clears throat> you know, what I use on a daily basis to, to run like zero DTEs or just what I look for trends, um, essentially how I learned everything, right? Essentially all I know to give to you guys. You can join the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash but I'm not a trader. Um, again, that isn't going to last too long. I'm going to be moving the platform over to somewhere else and I've already chosen it um, recently. So <clears throat> I know where the, I know where my new system is going to be set off to. And like I said before, um, it's not going to I'm not going to put it at where it's currently at because right now the Patreon's like 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month. Right. That's not going to happen anymore. I I'm moving this to be at least anywhere between 500 to $7, 700 bucks for a, for like a full for like a full feat, right? For everything. So instead of somebody just doing month by month ten dollars, it's just gonna be a one time thing of like five hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks, right? That's really it. <clears throat> and in this video, I wanted to really go into how I look at for, it, you know, it's, it's Sunday, so I'm not really gonna do any TA, but I wanted to look at any, um, I wanted to look at trends for, um, for, uh, for sectors, right? So usually during the weekend, right, like Sundays, right, and I'll, and and this is actually something that I haven't really even told the chat yet about, but I'll you know I'll I'll, I'll put it up in this video, right. So re usually what I do during the weekends is I set up my, you know, my indicators, right. With this is generally my my main indicators that I use, the ones that I have, right. Again, see, it would have told you to buy right here, it would have told you to buy right here, and I and this is what I call my reverse MACD, right. It's generally a really good way of detecting trend. It's a really good way of understanding the market as a whole. It's a really good way of just, <clears throat> you know, learning a whole bunch, right? And it, it's very easy to trade with this system, right? Um, but generally what I do during the weekend is I take some time and I just kind of look through all the sectors going into the week to figure out which ones are bullish and which ones are bearish, right? And that kind of gives me a really good indication of where, what kind of bias I should probably have for the week, right? Like right now for SPY, right? We're currently in a... Eight hour VC, so eight hours my, my um my my choice right for what I use. Um, but you can also use a daily to give you a really good understanding of what's going on. Um, I started recently using the twenty four hours just because a buddy of mine uh told me that it gives you a little bit more information. Um, but I generally just choose a daily because it just it, it's very clean, right? So again, <clears throat> what I told you to long right here, November second, right. Long right here, March 31st, long on January or on January 12th, right? Long on October 4th, right? This would have been a false long here at September 9th, right? So you would have longed here. It would have only gone up about $5 before dropping, right? So that, I would still call it a win, right? Because you would have probably still had enough time. How much time is that? Let me see. September 9th to September 12th, 13th. Yeah, you would have had like five days to do that, right? Again, you would have longed here, pushed up, longed here, pushed up for a little bit, longed here, pushed up. So plenty of time um, for these false for these false positives to, to run, right? But again, this one, long right here. You would have long right here, came right back down, but you would have had a second long right there. So again, you're looking for super clean closes, and that's why I usually like using this um this in this this specific uh, chart type, right, which is gonna be the Renko. And I usually use the Renko for like a very solid understanding of what the trend is going to be for the foreseeable future, right? I mean, you can tell ex extremely well what, where we are at. So for SPY, you're still very bullish, right? You're still extremely bullish. You're running on a day on a two day VC right now on the daily. You just, you know, you're still running on a day on the daily cycle, right? And you are, you are starting to be a little bit overextended, but you know, I'm not really too worried because the four hours been, you know, unreliable. So that's how you know that you're still pretty bullish towards the upside, right? Um, if you run on the weekly, again, you're barely hitting these tops, but usually when you hit a top like this on the stochastic, you tend to stay up here for a while, right? Like for here, like you hit, you hit a top peak of the, of this level of the stochastic and you stayed here from January 4th, 2021, all the way to February for like a full year, right? You essentially stayed in this range for a full year. So, you know, if you hit this like right now, October, yeah, I would not be surprised if we just continue this whole thing throughout the throughout the year of 2024, all of our, all of, you know, essentially all of uh, 2024. Right. But and that's basically it. Right. It essentially tells you where to long, where to not long. The last long was in November 2022. Right. You would have taken this trade at 390. You would have closed this at 390. You would have longed it since then, which is absolutely insane. 
but we're okay, we're focusing more on like shorter term, right? For maybe for like the next month or so, what the what, what it's gonna be like. So spy, definitely still bullish. We look at IWM, which is generally just like the shorter, um, like the smaller caps, right? And again, it's been very very, you know, November till up until <clears throat> what December, like a full month, right? May up till July, right? January up to February. So it gives you roughly about a month of, 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 um, what is it called? Of cycles, right? And, and I wouldn't see this as any other like difference. Like last time we closed the VC on this was probably a while ago. So if we go back and check on the last VC that we had, the last VC was, it came in at like right here, I'd probably say here. And then you had a real big push on the IWM. So again, IWM. <coughs> You were bearish for a little bit. You were bearish from, you know, January 3rd up until January 11th, right? So maybe like the last week and a half or so, but it does like, it does look like you just switched it up. But if I, I'm waiting for a red bubble here, once that red bubble comes in, you know, then you're going to understand to VC, you're probably going to start breaking these highs of like 205, right? So IWM, not bullish yet, but it's looking into getting uh, bullish. <clears throat> Soxel, which is going to be all of the semiconductors, so like NVIDIA, AMD. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say NVIDIA or AMD. I'd say, I'd say everything but NVIDIA, right? Because NVIDIA is still extremely, um, you know, bullish, right? Let's actually double check that. Let's see how everything closed. Let's see where NVIDIA is. Why can't I change my... There we go. So NVIDIA... <clears throat> Did we start coming down? Yeah, you haven't really started coming down a video. Actually, hit that. I actually had a target of six fifty three, I think, and that already hit. So I think Nvidia, AMD is probably coming down, right? I think AMD is coming down. AMD. Oh, there we go. See, AMD recovered right on. The, I can guarantee you this. It's it's recovering right on that trend. Watch. <clears throat> it's on the four hour. Yeah, there you go. See, hit trend. Hit trend and immediately just ran up like crazy, which is great. Yeah, so I'd argue Soxel is definitely still bearish, probably in other areas. Um, maybe not necessarily NVIDIA and maybe just recovering for, um, what is it called, for AMD. So this is usually what I do. I grab my indicators and I just look at everything. So I'm like, oh, this is kind of be what, you know, we're going into. Like right now, <clears throat> you know, energy. XLE, XLE is what? Energy? Energy looks bearish, right? DIA looks bullish still, right? XLF, the finance section looks still looks bullish, right? <clears throat> XLK, XLK looks like it's barely going to turn bullish or just turn bullish. So these are really good longs. So this is technology. I need to figure out what's in here because look, the last time we had an eight hour trigger on these, look what happened, right? You ran super hard from January 5th all the way up towards January 24th. And this is without using the, this is without using um, the Renko chart, right? So I, I definitely look at longing right now, um, you know, for, for this one. It looks really solid, at least for like a month out, right? It looks really nice. XLK, right? Let's go with VU, which is basically just S&P 500. <clears throat> and it's funny because you can see the stochastic like this, right? You can see this, this inverse head and shoulders hit the stochastic, which is pretty nice. You would have, you would, I would have definitely longed on this head, inverse head and shoulders, right at this level, this previous level. So right around, I would have longed as soon as we hit this. So like right here, I would have. Oh, that's insane! <clears throat> I would have longed right there at four thirty four at that inverse head and shoulders pattern before that huge pop, right? And you see the inverse head and shoulders pattern right here, as well as the stochastic. So stochastic is a really good way of detecting what kind of pattern like you're looking at so vu tmf tmf looks bearish whatever tmf is the 20-year treasury so that looks very bearish xlv which is healthcare healthcare looks bearish like it's it just turned like, like it's barely gonna start turning bearish so this is usually what i do on a sunday basis and obviously you can't do this without my without the indicators that i have current <coughs> currently on here right you obviously like can't really do that um but yeah, that, that's usually what I do every Sunday. So I haven't even told really like the chat and stuff of what it, what really is going to happen. Like even on SPY right now, right? If you run after hours, this definitely looks like it's going to come right back down to 486. Like I definitely take shorts. Like this is my, this is, this should be a very easy short right here, right? Like boom, right there. 
take this all the way back down to trend and your stops would be right there. Extremely easy short, right? Like right here. And you even have an inverse head. Well, I wouldn't really call that, but same thing, <clears throat> right? If you're gonna long, I'd probably look at longs like as soon as this on the four hour, right? As soon as you hit this level, right? This looks like an inverse head and shoulders pattern. So I definitely look for longs right here. And I can almost guarantee you this might actually come right back down to like this level 480 to six before blasting off to like 501 this week, maybe. So, you know, just some sauce for you guys. So yeah, that's basically how I look for sector trends. And, you know, I use, obviously I use my indicators for that. So if you guys are interested, go to the Patreon, but that's, that's kind of what I do on Sundays, really. I mean, it's very simple. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.